Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Tonight's film is 1974's The Single Girls. Here it is, folks. The tagline is, searching for a man was a way of life. If they couldn't get him easy, they got him hard. Half clad, all bad. This is The Single Girls. Here it is. And this is put out by Desert Island Classics. You can see the back here. Uh, Desert Island Classics puts out a bunch of movies. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, purchased this on Amazon. And these are DVD-Rs, but it looks like they own the rights to them. Uh, you can see here. Um, and... Uh, the copyright for this actual uh, DVD is 2011, and DesertIslandFilms.com has their own site. Desert Island Classics puts out a lot of films um, that are really, really rare. I guess uh, this is a film that I couldn't find in any other, you know, any other way. Um, I believe it was originally, you know, you know, obviously on VHS, but cannot find those copies at all. And uh, this is a film that is not on DVD or Blu-ray at all, except for this. And this is the first that I heard of it, The Single Girls, 1974. Now, this stars Claudia Jennings, uh, who's also in a film that I reviewed on this YouTube page, Truck Stop Women. Uh, she was also a Playboy Playmate as well. And she gets uh, top billing in the credits uh, for this particular film. So let's let's talk about this film uh, and get into this film a bit because uh, again, you know, they just don't make films like this nowadays. This is a very unmarketable, unique film, and I can't wait to talk about it with you. What great cover artwork right there, without the glare, of course. Great stuff. And if you look closely, you can see a couple little things here and something right there that's kind of crazy, right? Okay. So let's talk about this movie. This is The Single Girls 1974. Essentially, what we have here is a very interesting situation where we have kind of a, uh, a vacation resort, supposedly a Caribbean resort, where men and women go to uh, that have uh, who are kind of relationship dysfunctional or sexually dysfunctional um, this is a place where men and women go to um, kind of like a sexual therapy sexual counseling uh, retreat uh, so to speak and they go individually they do not go as couples they go individually and you know kind of meet somebody there or get paired up with somebody there. Uh, this is a very unique situation because they have a variety of uh, kind of retreat therapy uh, activities that are quite sexual or uh, interesting uh, in a deep, you know, psychological education type of way. I mean, not in a necessarily a sleazy kind of way. And it's a retreat. It's a, a retreat area. It could be a resort, something like that, um, that has a bar, that has uh, places to meet up with people, uh, dancing, belly dancing, all of that kind of situations, uh, some entertainment, so on and so forth. Um, and uh, essentially, that's what we have here. Uh, now, if if that were not enough... This film also has a mystery. It also has suspense. It takes a massive twist where all of a sudden... Well, I mean, it really doesn't take a twist because you kind of understand from the beginning of the film that there is another element to this film, and that is a horror element. Yes, there is a horror element amidst this, um, amidst this film. So one of the things I definitely want to say is that this is a character film. This is a character-driven film. Claudia Jennings does amazing. I thought she was amazing in Truck Stop Women as well. She's really, really awesome, and I thought that everybody uh, did an awesome job. I thought especially the women in this film were awesome uh, with their acting, and it's really, uh, I would say, woman-focused. Um, the, the women that kind of room together, the girls that kind of come to this retreat themselves, the guys are really kind of secondhand in the film. Although you will spend time with them, you will only spend time with them in relation to the women, okay? And the women are great. The women are attractive. They're sexually attractive. They're interesting. Um, there's really, you know, like I said, this is character driven. Uh, the men are interesting. The women are interesting. Um, all different types of personalities and stories and backgrounds and relationship backgrounds that all have implications within the film itself. Now, in this particular film, we do have a lot of, um, 
you know this would not this would not please most horror fans let's just say that okay we have a lot of um you know just kind of interesting characters interesting situations uh kind of weird 70s type dialogue and um almost some some snippets of dialogue that you would almost want to put on a t-shirt if you catch my drift but some really you know kind of interesting uh, 70s drama 70s sexuality 70s uh relationship types of things uh definitely on a Without being explicit, without having a ton of nudity, there's definitely uh, sexploitation elements of this film, without a doubt. Uh, especially in the first, I would say, like 20 minutes of the film. Um, but, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is that with this particular film, the opening credit sequence, you are really going to understand that this film has many elements and is mixing genres as well. And in particular, I would say sexploitation and horror. Now... The opening uh, credit sequence has kind of a theme song about America, kind of a 70s rock, soft rock type of song. Really catchy, really cool chorus, great verses. And you'll hear that song again throughout the film. For the rest of the film, you are going to hear some um, moody 70s type music, um, some suspense cues. And folks, yes indeed, there are suspense cues from the original George Romero Night of the Living Dead in this film. I heard them and recognized them instantly and the suspense cue is repeated. I don't know if that music Music and Night of the Living Dead was actually uh, library music. I think it is. And if that's the case, then this was library music that was used uh, some some years later. Not a lot of years later, but some years later um, after Night of the Living Dead. So it was really interesting to hear it in this particular film. And it was you know quite bizarre to, to hear that. Now, in this film, uh, there is a lot of style. There is a lot of style. There's a lot of interesting style. Now, I don't know how much of it was the transfer, which was not that bad, to be honest. It looks like it was taken off of a VHS tape. But the transfer really was not not as bad as you'd be expecting for a DVD-R, Desert Island Classics, What Is This Company, so on and so forth. But, but um, the transfer was actually quite good. But really interesting cinematography in this film, like a lot of distant shots where you're still hearing the dialogue. They start off close then they go really far back and they stay there really interesting distant shots very interesting dark shots like with shadows that stay there um there's an element that, that that's just really interesting. There's a couple, there's one section that's kind of like fantasy mixed with, it's about to, mixed with reality or dream, um, where there's some interesting editing going on and, and just some fades, some slower fades and in, in repetition. But, uh, you know, for the most part, we really have, you know, kind of these weird, really blatant distant shots, like really far back that stay there while the dialogue is going on. It's very, very interesting. Um, and I thought it was I thought it was really cool. Now, in terms of the sexuality of the film, um, as I mentioned, you know, it definitely has a sexploitation bent to it, although you you know, it's predominantly uh, you know, tight outfits is predominantly your imagination. There's a there's a uh, a therapy dark situation near the beginning of the film that's very sexual. It's very erotic, um, and uh, but you're really not seeing any nudity until kind of the movie goes on and later in the film. That's when you get the most nudity. It's all topless. Uh, you're getting a little bit of butt from Claudia Jennings. Um, of course, Claudia Jennings is topless. Um, but there's not a, a tremendous amount of nudity, uh, but there is nudity also paired with violence as well. And But a lot of the sexuality, a lot of the eroticism of this particular film is in the dialogue, is in the fantasy, is in the therapy, is in the relationship uh, situations. Um, and there is some very bizarre dialogue in this film, um, you know, kind of exploitation type dialogue. And there's also some, some really bizarre... Uh, relationship relationship situations or dialogue or um involving marriage involving um you know a, a fantasy situation that involves um kind of a rape fantasy in this film uh, s and m um so there's some really interesting things going on in this movie um and in terms of violence uh you you essentially have mystery uh, throughout the film um and that mystery gets revealed but 
you don't really see a lot of violence. Uh, there's a couple pieces that happen with some blood, and then there is a violence sequence with the big nudity sequence, um, topless, that happens near the end of the film that I gotta say was actually quite awesome and quite brutal, quite violent. Um, so that was like really off-putting. You know, you have a film that's, you know, a vacation type of element, um, erotic, sex, relationships, 70s, tight outfits, uh, beautiful girls, blonde and brunette, um, and uh, some characters that are really interesting, very bizarre. Some of the situations are very 70s, low-budget, bizarre, if you catch my drift, if you like these kinds of films. Um, and then all of a sudden, you have this suspense in the film, which really shows the way this film just kind of mixes genres and kind of takes twists and turns, and predominantly in the end of the film. I mean, you have these suspenseful situations inside caves, you know, almost like the descent, and a really weird bat situation that happens in this film as well, uh, that I thought was like kind of almost funny or, or crazy in a way. Um, but you have this suspense of fire, you know, in, in, in caves. And you have this type of, all this mix of elements in this film. And it's a very unique film, and it's not a marketable film because of the mix of genres here. Sexploitation, exploitation, and horror, and suspense. This is The Single Girls. Now, there were alternate titles for this film as well. Um... But this is The Single Girls. I believe, you know, with this title, you kind of get like a sexploitation vibe. But there was an alternate title um, that was a true horror vibe to the film. So you could see that they were marketing it as two different films because of the different genres in the film. This is 1974's 83-minute The Single Girls. You can get this on Desert Island Classics on Amazon. And routinely, it kind of... Um, sells out on Amazon, um, but they'll get more copies in, I guess, you know, it's DVD-R, so it looks like it's a legit uh, thing, so you can order this, uh, they're approximately about $10 each, and if you have Prime, you can, Amazon Prime, you can get them, um, uh, you know, without, you know, free, with, with, uh, with free shipping, so I bought up a bunch of these, I'm going to be doing more reviews on these Desert Island classic films, there's a lot of weird, unknown films like this one, thank you so much for watching the Ten Room Bizarre YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more, please feel free to check out all my other reviews on this YouTube page, sexploitation, exploitation, bizarre, horror, sex comedy, erotica, it's all here, folks, um, weird, bizarre, underground, low budget, all here. Thank you so much, and please feel free to check out my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopy diarrhea. Thank you, and good night.